My name is John Vanden Mirendonk and I, uh, I am a volunteer with uh, the Bainbridge Island Land Trust. Today we're going to walk through the uh, Springbrook Creek Preserve and uh, we're standing here at the beginning of the preserve and uh, look at this wonderful, uh, uh, this is uh, Mahonia, this is uh, the tall Mahonia and this is Mahonia aquifolia in full bloom, just spectacular. You don't see it too often. It is a native. It is around this area, and uh, but this one's just spectacular because it's just, just in full bloom. We're sitting on the lower edge or the eastern edge of the property where the homestead used to be. Uh, the property encompasses 23 acres. It's very diverse. Uh, 13, uh, 13 acres is upland woodlands mostly Douglas fir forest. Uh, we have Springbrook Creek goes through the pretzel of the property. Springbrook Creek uh, covers almost, it goes through this property about a quarter mile here through here. That is almost completely uh, shouldered by uh, red alder. We'll get closer to that and take a look at that. A lot of uh, salmonberry, of course, which you'll expect in this area. The salmon berries are native uh, berry that uh, provides a tremendous amount of food for wildlife in this area. And it's endemic. It's not just endemic in this area, but in the whole Pacific Northwest region. This is definitely a lowland forest. Lowland forest means everything that's in the lowlands of the Pacific Trough area. And everything uh, drains into uh, what we call the Salish Sea watershed, which is everything from almost uh, three quarters of the way from Vancouver Island and the entire Puget Sound area. All of this water drains in here. This property is very unique. One thing is that uh, we have wetlands, we have upland forest, we have fringe areas that are very dynamic and uh, uh, be in a very uh, beneficial for a number of different animals and bird species. So this property is just, just spectacular because of its diversity. The property is closed to the public. It is open under, uh, we do have lead tours, but with the coronavirus right now, we are doing this, uh, this uh, filming here so that people can still uh, see what the property is like without having to come out to it or having to have someone to show them the property. And that was the purpose of this uh, video. Uh, videotaping today. This is Blecknam Spicant. This is one of our most ornamental ferns. What's so great, and it's a fern that likes a little bit of moisture, so we know that this area has moisture. But what's so cool about it is this fern is dimorphic. Dimorphic meaning a frond of two different shapes. We have these basal fronds that are only there to, for photosynthesis. Then we have this tall skinny little thing. The pinnae or the little leaflets are totally reduced, but that is where the spores are produced. This is the northern wood fern, Dryopteris expansa. And it's more common than people think. They, we tend to get overwhelmed with this one. But this one is really pretty too. Our most common fern. It's a beautiful evergreen species. You can see how tall it gets. These are almost five foot tall. And uh, ferns are very unique. They came onto the planet about 375 million years ago. They don't reproduce by seeds. They reproduce by spore, a single cell spore that's produced on the undersides of the fronds. And the dug fir here, which is really cool, as they get older, they get deeper clefts into the bark. And uh, even this tree has only maybe a foot and a half, two foot diameter. It, it's, it's probably 70, 80 years old, and I can tell that by how deeply cleft the bark is. We have another tree that's even more deeply clefted. And when you really get into big, big Douglas fir, that bark can be as thick as four to six inches thick. It's on every continent except Antarctica. This is our bracken fern. And bracken fern, 
when you look at a patch of bracken fern, you got to just think that underneath the soil is nothing but a network of mycelia, which is the root network of fungus that's spread all over. This is just the pops up out of there, gets most of the nutrition actually right out of the soil from the mycorrhiza, but this stuff is uh, just amazing. Uh, like I said, it's the most common plant in the, on the planet. This stuff is amazing. You can get 12, 14 foot tall, this bracken. <laughs> Uh, this is called skunk cabbage. The genus is Lysochiton. It is a uh, native in wetlands all over this area. Absolutely beautiful flower. It is just emerging. You can just see a little pollen falling out of here. The floral leaf, this spate, is going to be growing. The leaves are very long, like banana leaves, and it's one of our most beautiful uh, native wildflowers.